Okay, big to do. Now I wear my glasses because I got to look at stuff, right? I remember I got this in the train a couple of days ago. Red wine. Like I said, I don't drink a lot of wine. This is just tonight out. I probably won't even drink the rest of this. Let's see what happens with that. But you know what goes good with red wine? Oh, what I can't get in South Africa. Milky Way Midnight. Milky Way Midnight. That's right. Dark chocolate goes good. Good red wine. Mmm. Mmm. And you know. What is this for another thing? Think about that another time. Um, I'm at my best friend's house in um, St. Louis and seen it a while. A lot of my stuff, stuff is here. So we found early, like, early 70s poetry. What's that? I won't show you. I won't embarrass myself right now. Now we got late, um, late audio dramas. Uh, see, because my audio dramas plays that I did from when I started in 86 to 96, 10 years of audio drama, live audio drama, I should say. I'm going to go through the whole list with y'all. Hold on a second. Started with The Night Racism Ended, Craving Energy Collective. Those are my, you know, my core people. All of these things I produce, it doesn't matter, so I won't repeat that. Um, Case of the Ornate Vile, no, no, we did the Douglas Turn Awards, Day of Absence. Um, that was the first one I did at the station, that's when I used the entire station, that was an amazing thing. And here, guess what, I found this picture. Here's Douglas Turn Award, and me, Douglas Turn Award. The reason why I did that, uh, Mel Wright took this post photo, by the way. The reason why I did that, when I did that, this is when we, later on, I think it's later when we did, I don't even think it's listed, it might be here. I would work with the Playwriting in the Schools Pits program. Arthur Wilson pioneered that. I'll tell you about that some other time. But we were doing a, a piece, you know, Strange Enough Creative Unity, and, uh, and we had professional actors like Douglas Turner Ward and my group. It was really interesting what happened with that. I won't go into it right now. But they, that's when we were, there was a Shakespeare Festival, New York Shakespeare Festival, you know, just a passion. It's called this Pat Theater right now. Let's put that up, of course. See, we started with Doug, and believe it or not, we ended with Doug. Um, well, Peace and Blessing is a term soul, by the way. Um, also on this, there's Dave Absolute, the first real production we did together. Um, then we did The Case of the Ornate Vial, which is an amazing piece. Uh, that's an original piece. Uh, like Shakespeare, oh, not Shakespeare, but I'm talking about the guy, um, Arthur Conan Doyle, what's that guy? You know, the, the, the detective guy, right? Um, the People Who Killed King, that was by Mark Hyman, who I produced that. Uh, all these things the Creative Unity somehow was involved with. Uh, then we did Richard Wright's, oh, that's that, that, that was in 88. This is the 88 we did uh, Richard Wright's, the long, excuse me, the long three dream. 89 we did Three by Do, meaning Henry Duma, took some of the short stories and did that live on the air. Um, and also in 89 we did The Eve of Christmas Eve, that was an original uh, piece. We did The Glorious Monster and the Bell of the Horn, but that was just a section of it. That's Larry Neal's piece uh, that we did there. A scenes from Larry Neal's um, Glorious Monster and Bell of the Horn. Uh, that was 90. In 91, uh, we did uh, Richard Wright's Law Today in the Outsider. That was my big production. Uh, that eight and a half hours, whatever long it was. Uh, live audio drama. We started New Regions Post Cafe. Ended up at the station. Um, and I talked about that before. Operation Welcome 91. We also did Operation Welcome Home. Question mark. It's an original rap opera. It's the first. Um, that was the first rap opera, if you want to put it that way. That was the one, in fact, uh, I just. Um, um, James Small and uh, Sophia Mandeli were the, were the recent, uh, uh, I'll find stuff with that, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm, okay, now when, then I became arts director. So all these are sort of basically black themed kind of things like that. But then I became arts director at WBAI, the first piece I did when I became arts director was Animal Farm, which included the whole station. Okay, then we did, then we did Lewis Carroll's Adventures in, in uh, uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and through a Litton class. Uh, we did uh, Mark Twain's Putting Head Wilson, I really like that piece. No Injustice Phantom Toe Booth, this was all in 92. Uh, oh, also in 92, uh, me and Jake, we was at, we was in Mexico. We did this, uh, A Fio del Viaje, and that was, that was in Spanish. It was the first piece 
uh, done on a national uh, national radio, well, Spanish national radio, that fit that had the theme of AIDS involved in it. So that was interesting. Um, in '93, we did Amos Totola's Palm Wine Drinker. Uh, also, we did um, um, or oh, before that we did uh, uh, Carlo Colori's Pinocchio. These are all big productions. Or did Brother Minister? I have a script here. Brother Minister, we did '94. That was an original thing. Um, uh, and on '95, the coming play, Lori Garrett. That's what I did. That's when I uh, was at. Um, uh, that was done in Dakar, Senegal. Um, uh, Larry Neal's Glory Sponsor Bill the Horn, which was the last big, well, big production I did at uh, the BAI. Then the Leavings Project with portions of that we did there. So hey, that that was interesting. Going through that. Oh, what's in here? Let's go through. Oh, I'll say that's the last. It's, well, I mean, let's stick to that. This was a picture, a very famous picture, and the guy, this Bernstein guy, lost a negative of this picture. This was a part of a folio that we did. The folio, I think we, I forget what we was doing. I think, I think this was when we was doing uh, something glorious. I forget what we were doing. A play. I think it was a long thing. Maybe it was, maybe it was uh, the outsider. But this was a folio. This was the cover of it. New Kingdress was just coming to doing this thing like that. But in that, this picture of me holding a microphone pose, this guy, professional photographers were uh, Colette uh, Geisel and Toby um, Etheridge. They were, you know, anyway, they did this thing in a professional studio. And this, you can't see, the, anyway, this is an incredible picture. It was like one book picture in my, and what, what struck you about the picture when you turned the photo, you stopped. It was a stunning thing because my eyes was really woof. It was, it was an amazing picture. But the guy, the folio guy, he took this negative and lost it. Claims he lost it. So I don't know, this is a, one of those lost things. You know, well, there you go, you know. That's what happens. Let me see, let me keep on going through some of the stuff that I found at JB's. Uh, oh, here, this is interesting. Oh, this is Glorious Monster of Bella Horn, the last piece we actually did. This the, the, the um, what do you call that? The program, because we did it at the Knitting Factory, and we had a whole program of all the people that were involved. You know, like a, like a play, right? Just a second. Oh, in fact, here's the, um, oh, the blue. This is the um, tape, because we taped it and gave it as a premium right before I left. Um, yeah, uh, let me see what this is here. Oh, this, I know what this is. This is, okay, this is Glorious Monster Bell and Horn too, but this is the staging that I put, because the thing about Glorious Monster Bell and Horn is Larry Neal's seminal piece on black, on, on black arts, about well, black arts play. Um, but what I, I did it like Peter the most, I had musicians. Like each character had a musician um, uh, appointed to a small um, stage at the knitting factory. But this was like the, the map out of where the music was, where the musicians were. And, were, and then every time somebody would come up to a mic, the character from the mic, the musician would be there. In fact, let's go back to this here. Um, oh, here's the musician's coupling. Here we go. Now, J.D. Perrin um, played the baritone saxophone. And, and also, I think he must have did his, his um, uh, Herbert Lee Robinson, maybe he did the voice for that. Jasmine Verguda was Sammy Phillips, and uh, Bobby Watson was the, played the also sax behind him, right? Douglas Turner Ward was Wally Robinson, and and, uh, um, and Jasmine Verguda was on harmonica. He's also Jasper. Was, I gotta run into, I hope I get him, but run into Jasper. Amadea Best was, uh, played Vernon Robinson, and, and also Cooper Moore was on per percussion. Cooper Moore, famous cat, he played it, he, he, he made his own his own um, um, instruments and stuff like that. He also hung out with the Barrington Brothers. Um, Tom Mitchison, great, great Tom Mitchison, um, he was played uh, Herbert Lee um, Robinson Sr. and uh, Wade Barnes was on drums with that. Yusuf Lamont played Peter Arvison and Craig Harris was on trombone. I just talked to Craig Harris just, just hours ago. Um, hopefully we'll be doing something uh, do something. Um, I don't think Arthur Wilson, Arthur Wilson was supposed to be Chris Hansen. I don't think he showed up. Victor uh, Nemo uh, McCad was the, on the trumpet. Uh, Kurt Lampkin, oh man, piece of place of the soul. He he played uh, um, Dickie Davenport, where Don Byron was on uh, uh, clarinet behind him, the great Don Byron. And um, also, remember, Kurt Lampkin was one of the poets in residence for Normal Radio. Uh, Daryl McNeil played uh, uh, Dr. Richard Davenport with. Uh, um, and Vincent Chauncey was on the French horn. Uh, Sheba Riley played Rose Norwood with uh, Bobby Watson on the flute. 
Henry Afro Bradley or Peace and Blessing on his soul. Henry Afro Bradley. Anyway, he picked Captain Damney with Michael Wembley on piano. Uh, Jared uh, uh, Harley, she's really great. She played The Man in Blue. And when Amadea Best was doing the Shake Ray and the African Xylophone. Uh, Bernard White, Sonny Boy, Sonny Boy Smalls. Oh, no, Bernard didn't show. What did he do with that? I forgot what happened with that. But he was in the audience. Definitely, Bernard was around. Cooper Moore was on Bo Dilly there. And um, I played Raven Raymond. Wow. Um, my, uh, then my, my, uh, I had the, my, uh, my sound effects people, uh, uh, Matthew Finch, he also played the hospital PA system. Uh, Jeff Ward was the announcer. Then we had the voice chorus. Uh, D oh, Dean Bowman was the captain of the voice chorus. Unbelievable. Dean Bowman, woof. Unbelievable. Uh, of course, Foley was uh, Jeff Ward and Matthew Finch, and uh, Ted Su Su was, was additional Foley. So that was a huge production last one I did before we left. And this is, the, this is actually this is the script. Yeah, this is the script. It's just thick like that. Wow. This script for that. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, don't knock over my wine. Huh? Hey, don't knock over the wine. Mm. Cabernet Sauvignon, by the way, just in case you want to know. Oh, this is a mystic win. This is interesting. The works of Henry Dumont adapted to the stage by moi, by me. That's you know, right um, And I have this note here. This is interesting. This is uh, Linda Redbow and I were in the house together, and we had stationery growing up. So you had the African statue. You can't see it. Silhouette put up with a book on top, like knowledge thing. And we really was in the community. Let me read this note that I wrote to JB. Because this case says Linda Rero and Anthony Stone like that. Um, my phone is off. <laughs> I was said JB before. Hi JB, I'm glad uh, you went to see Altered States. I love the sound effects of that film. Hey, I'm the film guy. Finished reading uh, uh, Fifth Horseman. Good work, good book like that. I wanted even more. Uh, I'm now reading Black Power by Richard Wright. I get such a support and inspiration from Wright. Oh, this is interesting. I first understood the concept of God by reading Black Power, Richard Wright. I won't explain further. <laughs> I will not explain further. Things come, uh, things are in crisis here at 15 Thursday, but such is life. I'll have to give you insight for another time, but I'm happy to uh, I'm on my sister's address, okay, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, what's interesting, well, it's interesting to me. Anyway, so this is a Mystic Wind, a play that adapted from um, the works of Henry Dumas. I was like, I'm gonna see, uh, I'm gonna see uh, Eugene Redmond, who's an executive of the state of Henry Dumas. I was just on the phone with Loretta Dumas, well, Henry, well um, uh, today, but uh, I'm gonna see, because he's in East St. Louis, and, uh, so I'm gonna see him to tomorrow in St. Louis. Yeah, it is. It's the worst thing to do that. But here we had this thing that I, we had done this thing, uh, did this thing, Root Song, um, uh, a, a thing with, with Jan. With Jan Ford was a choreographer and a dancer. I, would, I did the poetry, and uh, Greg Mills he did a painting in the back. Now this is early, this is um, 1981. Call it performance art. Performance art before performance art is really big. So all that's. So all that I found today here. Uh, what else has happened? Let me see what else I found. Hold on, hold on. There's more stuff. I got this with you. What else got here? Uh, oh. It's here. Here we have, oh, Richard Wright. Richard Wright Knight. Okay. Oh, this is, uh, oh, this is Brother Minister. The piece that Cravian, she, she wrote. Um, uh, Mark Marks played by Dwight R. B. Cook, uh, Louis Farquhar played by uh, Charles Turner, Rodney Sh somebody, Michael Baber, all these uh, characters. Um, I don't remember. Oh, musicians: Craig Harris, Vince Williams, Michael Wembley. Interesting. Okay. Uh, crew: Blah blah blah. I'm one of the writers. Jake is da -da. Uh, Grayson's one of the technical directors, I guess. I directed the piece. Uh, Joan Baker is in it. James Sherman, you was not. James Sherman, uh, Donald McNeil, Sarah Fitzpatrick, uh, the voice of Play oh, Playtho Benjamin <laughs> was a voice there. Chris, Chris Brandt. Okay, I'm working with Chris Brandt now. Um, I love Chris. Um, so this is interesting. This is the script for uh, for Brother Minister. Hold on. Play on Malcolm X here. Oh, here it is right here. 
This is it right here. Okay. The script. Ah, this in here. Let's see, I think we're coming to the end. Oh, we're coming to the end. Right. So, let's go through this stuff. Oh, here's that picture. Just like that. Oh! 12 million black voices. Yes! Yes! Walter Bosley's, Walter Bosley's, I don't know, I got his card here, but I guess I must have interviewed him or something like that. Okay, okay, 12 million black boys for Richard Wright. Okay, here's what I did. There's a great book, I, 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 I know it's at my sister's house in Virginia, uh, 12 million black voices, and I adapted it. I adapted it as, a, I wanted to do it as an audio drama, but not as a live audio drama, as a recorded audio drama. It has all these voices, right? Oh, man. I, got, I, know, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. 400, 427 voices. 427 voices. That's why you have to do it on tape. <sighs> Text by Richard Wright, adapted radio by Anthony Sloan, told me about voices. That famous book where we had the photos, the photos, the photo books. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm so glad I found this. 427 voices. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. At the ADOS conference, right? That's happened in the beginning of October. What I'm gonna do, there's gotta be a lot of people there. I'm going to record people doing some of these people doing these voices. Because remember, this is about the migration going up to um, going up to up north, right? So the people at the ADOS conference are all gonna be ADOS. So that would be, that means their ancestry came up from the south to the north. These are the real this is the black people that came through slavery and whatever happened, you know what I mean? So if I oh this is oh oof, oof, oof. Now you see how it works? You see how it works? This is going to be wonderful. It's going to happen. I've got two days to do it. 420 voices. I can even repeat voices. I'm going to try to find 427 different people. We record them. Make sure you get their names or whatever have you. And we're going to have a, a, a recorded 12 million black voices. Richard Rice, please. Wow. This is going to be so good. I'm glad I'm going to the conference. I'm glad I found 12 million black voices. I still got a lot of place to look for. So anyway, that's it for me. Oof. Oh, this is, blows my mind. That's it for me for, for this little edition of, of whatever I'm doing here. Um, and that's right, you know, because we were at ADES of the ADOS. That would be American Descendants of Chattel Slavery. Plotting. Plotting and planning. It's going to be good. Whoa, 12 million black voices produced. <laughs>